All right. Wow. Thank you, guys. That's the three o'clock. <laughs> Remember them? Um, the Paisley Underground. The three o'clock. Michael, was it Cor Coricio? Wow, I've been a fan of his for like almost what, 20 years, maybe more, if I'm honest. Um, I'm probably mispronouncing his name. Amazing stuff. The three o'clock out of the West Coast. Welcome to the show. This is the Think Tank. And uh, it's a special episode today. We're going to do, we're doing the shows now in 10 minute intervals because I think there's so much information packed in here that you need to uh, sit down, take notes and absorb it. And what I'm going to deliver today is probably way over the top. The song that you just heard was called uh, In My Own Time. And I am in my own time <laughs> right now with a, a series of miracles. So this is crazy stuff. You know, this started out about a month ago, actually a little bit over a month ago. I'm on day 45. So I came to the conclusion that I'm going back to the old wisdom from Mr. Shapiro, who was Andy Kaufman's agent. And he said, you are surrounded by what you create. That could be an old uh, Jewish statement. I'm not sure where that exactly comes from. But it's definitely a wise statement when you think about what you're surrounded by. You're surrounded by everything you create. Everything you create, your problems, your victories, is all uh, intertwined. You are a co-creator of your universe. So I want to share with you some of these concepts. Then I'll get to the miracle part later because it might freak some of you out. But I think if you start looking at your life as... Uh, there needs to be miracles there. There needs to be breakthroughs. You know, there needs to be something monumental to prove that you're here living in this lifetime. <sighs> Don't just give up your authority to the pharmaceutical companies and let them call the shots and shut your brain off. I have always thought there was a higher level of living and that's what we're talking about today. So the theme of the show is miracles and high level. All right. Day 45. Uh, I want to mention this really uh, important fact. There's four levels of the highest self that you want to attain. I got a chart that I wrote down, and if you could read my writing, I'll show you the picture. This came from my notebook. Actually, I, I, <laughs> this one right here is a notebook. Uh, I'm going to show you a close-up what this looks like. But this took a little took a little uh, work to put this together. I'm going to have a close-up of what that looks like. This is so important right here there's about 30 statements here talking about the higher levels of uh, living i didn't bother to write the negative ones because a lot of us are already living in it. depression anxiety worry fear and how that affects the will the will is so sensitive that if it's filled up with the wrong things and you act on these impulses and these, these uh, you take directive from that and you open the door to a lot of problems and cycles that'll uh, bring a very negative life experience into manifestation. You don't want to do that. So I dedicated myself to only work with the higher frequencies and I wrote them down for you. So we're looking at full presence to be fully present and, and accountable for all the wrong that we do to other people and to ourselves with no hesitation. <laughs> Not easy to do if you're living from the ego. I used to have a huge ego when I was a kid. I don't know how I survived life. I almost didn't. I had a couple close calls. I uh, was mugged and uh, beat up twice. 
living in Chicago and in actually the East Coast, ended up in the ER. Uh, I'll get into some of those more embarrassing situations further in my studies, but I just want you to know that you are a co-creator in these types of environments that you get yourself into. So full presence, be aware of what's around you. Be aware of your communication with other people and what you allow into your life and what you speak. Be aware, be fully present because you are responsible for what happens in your life, good and bad. Full presence. Communion. Mm. I need to investigate this one a little, a little more. I don't mean holy communion, although it helps. Absolutely. <laughs> As you can see, I got my St. Michael medal. I, uh, I fully support that. But communion probably with other people, people that love you, people that want to share time with you, that you're too busy for. And I've been very guilty of not actively pursuing that through friendships, relationships, and any other interactions that you mean something to other people, the basic law of Kabbalah is to receive. And some of us just aren't ready. So these are things that I had to struggle with. I'm still working with it. So communion. Last week, I took my mother out for dinner. She worked a long shift. I, I went to go visit her, and I decided to uh, give her a break. And, and even though I had tons of work to do, I had tons of stuff to do, and I still do. I, I got a very full schedule. But I made the time to go over there because I mean something significant to her. Obviously, I'm her only son, but the point is I made the time to do that. I was very glad to do, to do that. I'm doing the same thing for my fiancé, too. I'm trying to be more present, working at it, and allowing myself to interact more. Be consciously aware of that. My own communion, communion and full presence. So that's, so that's two. Love and empathy. Hmm, interesting. Okay, let me just sum it up real quick. Uh, I have been preparing meals for my mother as she is uh, going to work. And I'm actually making the time to do that instead of just buying groceries and running out the door. I'm actually taking the time to put uh, effort into meals uh, for her. And she has a busy schedule. So do I. I learned this. I learned this, that when you prepare food for anybody from a place of love, it activates a, a very interesting neurochemical in the brain that sends out healing, love, and uh, attraction. And it brings warmth and comfort in that person. Healing. It's very healing. <laughs> As opposed to going out to like fast food places where people hate their jobs and they put that hate energy in their food. I know it sounds new age, but just listen. That will also activate a part of the brain that sends out hate and negativity. And it's a chemical that will actually kind of like damage your inner organs. Wow. Is that too much? Is that too much information? I had a friend of mine who was... Uh, a very good uh, yoga meditation teacher. And he would actually, he's from East India, and he would send his food back to places, sometimes as many as eight times, eight times, because it was so much, it was so negative that he didn't want to eat it. And as a result, uh, I'm, <laughs> one memory comes to me that he actually sent the food back and didn't didn't want it at all. It was that bad. He was so sensitive to this energy, he could actually feel it. Wow. So something to think about. This busy world that we're in. To take the time for the ones you love, your elders, your relatives, especially this holiday season, to uh, don't just pick up something from the store that's, that's, that's made in a bakery and just drop it off at your relative's house and run out the door. Take the time to make something for somebody and, uh, and experience the difference. This is, these aren't things that come overnight. These are things that you have to work at. And over time, they become easier. 
as we start going into our habits and our loops and how to construct our new identity with higher frequency, these don't become, these acts don't become cumbersome. They become very automatic. And when they're automatic, they're habits at that point. That's what we're striving for because as, as I'll show you in a few minutes where this is all going, it's an incredible energetic force that we're building up around ourselves. And these are things that are so important. I know I, I'm probably losing some of you, but take notes, and just follow with me because what I'm about to share with you is it's over the top crazy, okay? The next one, wisdom and oneness. Wisdom and oneness. Doing the right thing, working from uh, mind, body, and spirit as a oneness for the benefit of other people, consideration for other people, along with that empathy. These things all work hand in hand. And this is a high frequency level. Now, there's about 30 other ones that you'll see on this sheet. I got this from a book about how to set your highest intentions. I do believe that. It also corresponds with a chart about the energy centers in the body. There's seven, of course, seven chakras. And we're operating from the heart to the crown. Heart to the crown. The lower energies, such as jealousy, hateful, spite, spitefulness, and, and uh, uh, sarcasm and everything else. I think I mastered those. <laughs> As a punk rock kid growing up in the 80s, I think I mastered those. And um, trust me, I was rebellious. And I, but probably for good reason. We moved like 20 times. And I had uh, step parents that were less than desirable. So uh, I was always a new kid. But I mastered all those energies. I don't want to operate in that space anymore because the patterns that come from that are they're really unexpected accidents and uh, tragedies and, and uh, other things. I want the miracles. I'm seeing the difference now when you operate from the higher space. And I made a dedication to myself to operate only from those principles to increase longevity and joy and uh, prosperity. It's working. Let me show you. Okay. My fiance is some, some of you know, she's in the East Coast. I'm here right now taking care of my, my mother. I'm, I'm the only son. And my dad uh, is not in the picture. Uh, he passed away a long time ago. And, and so my mother is, you know, on her own. So I'm trying to figure out some of the big questions. If I'm operating in this space, how in the world do I start getting miracles every day? There was a, a rabbi in one of my books, I believe it was um, one of my Kabbalah books. There's a family that writes the Kabbalah books. And it, the question was, aren't miracles rare? Number one, how long do you have to wait for them? And uh, the rabbi was saying, well, in today's busy world, I would think it, I, I think if you weren't attracting miracles in your own life, that there'd be something wrong. Because this is supposed to be the way life is supposed to work. You're supposed to have many miracles, synchronicity, joy, and uh, periods of like uh, uplifting moments. It can't be just like a whole series of tragedy and misfortunes and bad luck. So if something is wrong in your alignment, to look at it, get things in place in order for these energies to uh, evolve and work and manifest in your life. Now. That is something you should uh, be thinking about. Miracles just don't occur in movies. They occur in real life, but you got to work for them. So going back to my fiance, she's back on the East Coast. She's in Connecticut. Now, um, here I am in Wald Lake. This is about as landlocked as you can get. I'm, I'm <laughs> many miles from Lake Michigan, even. Uh, I'm in the middle of the flatlands of Metro Detroit. And then one day, uh, it was about oh, day 35 or so. It was around Thanksgiving. Uh, 
this 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 showed up at the post office. This is a picture of a crab decoration for Christmas. I have no idea what this is doing here in Wall Lake. It's really weird. I mean, it's out of place. Either I don't know who put this up or or why it's even there or what this has to do with Christmas at all. I don't get it. But it did get my attention. All right, that was interesting. Gets more interesting. Uh, I was uh, going down 15 mile in Wall Lake. And I happened to find this lobster truck. Cousins Lobster from Maine. They were featured on Shark Tank, if you remember. Uh, a couple of cousins got together and they decided to start a lobster business. They built these lobster trucks and they went across the country and they they started selling them. But this is not a lobster <laughs> demographic. We're talking about lobster rolls, a very specific type of lobster. These are lobster sandwiches. There's a Maine style, right? Like a tuna salad type cold version of a lobster salad, like a tuna salad, but it's lobster meat. The other one, I believe the Connecticut style one, which is where my honey is, is a warm lobster with warm butter on it. I mean, so crazy. Not just one variety, but there was like four or five different varieties of this lobster salad. And they're, they're out for sale. They're all for sale. So crazy. What the what are the chances? What are the odds of that happening right here? You're manifesting this stuff right now, building a bridge, right? It's exciting. Now, you could say that's just a coincidence. So what? But you got to start from someplace. You got to start from a place of belief. And I think that anybody who makes a commitment to these, these five, four or five principles could create that reality. You can create that door open. Jesus said, knock and it should be open to you. Knock and ask sincerely with your heart. That takes dedication. That takes a real strong desire more than anything to bring that in. That desire to make that change, to go in and ask with a sincere heart to get that door open. You want to open the doors up. You don't always want to be in opposition of your goal. You start to move into that space and not freak out, but let it come and don't resist. As Matthew Hurtado says, allow. The book, allow. I'm not going to get into him right now. I'm a big fan of his work, but I'm going to see if I can slim simplify this a little bit better so you can just follow along with me. Okay, there we are. You will have this energy. Now, the doors opened. I got an idea that the universe is listening. So I'm on my best behavior because I want to keep this thing rolling. All right. Now, uh, can I go into my miracle story? All right, do that. Okay. My miracle story yesterday. I thought, when's my next miracle going to happen? <laughs> it happened unexpectedly. My um, my mother dropped a bowl, a big porcelain, like a bowl, like a salad bowl, and it broke into three big pieces. She took the broken pieces and she put them in her trash. So I went over there to help clean up the kitchen over on Sunday. And I, did, I was unaware there was broken pottery shards inside the, the glad bag. And when I went to go pick up the bag, it slashed up my hand. Now, you can't see anything here, but I'm going to show you a picture of what it looked like. I actually felt the, the shards go into my hand and rip open the flesh right open. This is crazy stuff. I'm going to tell you. And it bled pretty, pretty severe. And everyone told me 
go to the ER and get it taken care of. You might need some stitches. In fact, you are going to need some stitches. That's a pretty deep cut. That's a pretty deep red gash. And the, the blood was almost like purple. It was so thick and uh, wow. So I, uh, I did not go to the ER because I was in a hurry and I had things to do. Instead, I cursed the enemy. I cursed the devil. I cursed him. In the name of Jesus, you, you have no authority here. Go. And I was loud. And I commanded it to leave. The whole presence. I grabbed a Band-Aid, opened it, slapped it onto my hand, and then went out of my day. I had prayed so profusely, so profoundly. <laughs> I went to sleep, knock, it knocked me out, energetically it knocked me out for a couple hours. And it rained all day, this cold rain. And uh, I got up about noon, didn't know where I was. I was so exhausted and so wiped out. Got in my car, took off towards uh, to get some coffee. And something told me to look under the Band-Aid, my tuition. I opened it up, and there was nothing. There was hardly any scratches or no blood even came out. It was all clean, which I thought was really, really weird. A couple of hours later, there was like no sign that anything even happened. And the point is, I was so committed to my highest level self that nothing could hurt me. My energetic field was heavy and high with universal healing power and i called out to my surrounding energy field to uh protect me and to heal me and it did wow now just think about that also reminded me of a story that happened to me when i was younger similar story my my mother's husband uh was home drinking beer and being belligerent that was his that was his normal state he threw a bunch of beer bottles in the garbage that broke glass glass bottles that broke i want to say they were grosch bottles you know if you remember those they had a little ceramic top I used to get them from long island I don't know if they still make it or not, but they were all broken and busted. I, um, I gashed my thumb really good. You probably can't see it, but I'll, I'll show pictures of what it looked like. And you can see that it split right up the middle like a lobster tail. Now, Facebook banned my story. They said it was too graphic. I didn't show the picture of the wound. I showed a picture of a split lobster tail. <laughs> Big difference. We didn't take a picture of, of it uh, back then. But I had the scar for many, many years. And there's a close-up of what it looked like. Why am I telling you this story? I'm talking about the power of forgiveness. A few years ago, I forgave him. I don't know why my intuition was talking to me. And I forgave him. Even though I had this ugly scar on my thumb. I used to have to hide it from people when I talked to people because I was kind of embarrassed of it. Shake people's hand, I'd kind of hide it. I didn't want people feeling sorry for me either. That was the other thing. So, when I forgave him, well, that's interesting. Because the scar tissue popped off my thumb. And when I say popped off, they were hard scar tissue i couldn't even bend my thumb because that used to hurt imagine that couldn't even bend my thumb couldn't play video games well you know i'm a teenager couldn't i couldn't do that but in my adult years i forgave him with a whole heart but i also released him because he was not going to live in me in my energy field i completely flushed him out which we'll get into later. These are advanced strategies and techniques. 
that scar tissue left. I'm able to bend my thumb. I'm able to bend it. There's no scar there anymore. It's gone. Like a bad dream. Like it happened to somebody else. Or it happened to a movie that I saw a long time ago. Completely banished. And vanished. Gone. So, the power of forgiveness. I forgave him. Raised up my standards of energy and how I want to operate in this lifetime. Protected myself from a serious gash that could have left another ugly scar. And working with this mentality, nothing can hurt us. Nothing can hurt us. The idea that we are protected and loved as we love the energy force, what we let in and what we allow back and forth. How do you want to operate this life? How do you want to operate in this lifetime as a victim or as being victorious? So we're talking about here today on the win. That's my company. Sure, we do online marketing, but we also do uh, metaphysical inquiries, exercises, and uh, conquering our, I want to say it, our lowest self. Learning how to be victorious with manifestation and how to interact with your quantum field. That's why we call it the think tank. The show is the think tank. My company is the win. I decided to give you a new graphic today to kind of get a feel of it. So those are my thoughts. Now, this notebook I'm going to share, share with you, it's in process. There's a course coming out that explains how to work with the higher energies. I'm telling you, this is a, a thing I'm working on right now. Look at this. All this stuff. It's awesome. I've been working hard. A lot of books out there are, are fluffy too. They're, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean that they're, um, they're, they're made for the, the average seeker who's just getting his feet wet. You're going to see a lot of those types of books over at Barnes and Noble. <laughs> I think they're the only one, the big, you know, books that's left. You're going to kind of get the idea of how some of the stuff works. I went deeper than that. I found authors that were publishing back in 1906, 1911, um, some of the early thinkers of the subconscious mind in how to rebuild your inner inner man. So this is a really interesting study for me. And I'm sharing this now with you. So just consider those thoughts and know that there's a higher version of yourself out there that you can tap into that can overcome your everyday problems. They can overcome any mountain that you have. Cast your thoughts on the upper world, on the Lord. Cast that mountain into the sea, whatever obstacle you have. These are the thoughts I'm going to leave you with on this Monday. All right. That's going to wrap up our episode for right now. If you have any questions at all, you can always give me a call at tedcantu.com. Also, uh, you can drop me a line at this email address. That's tedcantu at gmail.com. My phone number is 248-277-6141. And you could also... Hmm, that's it, isn't it? Three? <laughs> the phone number, email, website. Yeah, I got you. All right, cool. So thanks for watching. We'll see you online. We got more stuff coming your way this week. Amazing things. And uh, reach out. Let's find out some of your challenges and see what we can do to help you. Until next time, I'm Ted Cantu. And if I can do it, you can too. And just remember that. There's an answer for everything. Thanks for watching. I'll see you online.